What is up everybody? It is Aug here back with another video and today we have a couple of firsts. It's the first time that I'm doing Mara before level 60 in a video and it is the first time that I am actually doing it on a gnome. So I'm extremely excited about this video to be able to bring you this and I think this is going to be one of the best kind of ways to level up in the mid 50s. And so one of the things I've been doing on stream recently is leveling up a bunch of new mages for multiple reasons, one for dagger farming so I can get that before ZG, but also so that I can start making some videos of how you can solo level on a mage to 60 through instances and things like that. The Western Plagueland AOE grind just gets overpopulated like crazy. And so this is an idea of basically how you can level up. The first one obviously being my ZF video that was just released recently. I'll link that up above. And that is basically the ZF blizzard strategy that can yield 200,000 experience per hour. It's absolutely incredible. And a ton of people have been doing that. But now the next installment, the next area that we're going to be jumping into is Mardon. And so this can be done as low as level 52 and can be done as high as level 57. And it's incredible i wouldn't do it at 57 just because most of the mobs are going to be great to you but any mob that is 46 you could still get experience from most of the mobs here are going to be 44 and 45 though and so you do want to probably be stopping this around or at least this section of mara around 55 or 56 at the very latest in order to optimize xp but you can see here that we are getting some really good xp even at 57 and so we're going to be jumping in it actually took me about three attempts to get this down and just figure out the way that we could do this as a lower level but at the end of the day there's certain consumables that we can basically use to counteract the level difference even though we're a lower level to be able to get this down without any issue at all and so this is going to be an amazing way to level up it's gonna be the next installment of how we can go to 60. so we're we'll jumping into the video first and then I'm going to be jumping into my talents and my gear at the very end going over that. You definitely want to make sure that you're optimizing as much as possible, but it is a ton of fun to do it at a lower level. If you guys are enjoying this content, definitely stay tuned to the Twitch and Discord. Come ask me any questions that you want in the Discord. We have a huge community and everyone's very helpful. It's absolutely amazing. And also hit that subscribe button on the YouTube for more videos and hit that ring so that you know when it goes live. So let's jump into the video. Okay, so we're going to get started right outside of Maradon here. Now this is going to be the same way that we start all the other videos, and we're going to be using the portal. Now you need to get the scepter in order to do this. I recommend just paying somebody to do it, having a friend help you or something like that. Since you are a lower level, you're not going to be able to solo Noxian and Lord Biletongue, which is hard in its own right at level 60. And so you definitely want to make sure that you have somebody help you. But on the same token, running from purple side to the start, just to get started with that, is not only going to add time to your level, but it's also going to make it much more difficult. So I do not recommend doing that. So obviously with a level 60 pool, you're going to be resisting a ton. You're going to have a decent ice barrier. And so there's a chance you can keep up ice barrier the whole time. But a lot of people still even use consumables there. But to do it at a lower level, the way that you counteract all of the damage is going to be through consumables. So we're going to come in here. We're going to drink before we get to the borers. There's a chance that you could aggro the borer if you're lower level when you come across the side here. So you want to make sure that you go ahead and you drink early. This is going to allow you to have 100% in the event that you do pull the boars on accident. Now, you're going to notice that I did pop a potion already, and that is the Nature Protection Potion. Just the regular one, standard one, not the superior one or anything like that. But the reason for that is that when the mobs are hitting you with the Nature Spells, you're probably going to still resist all of them. However, when you have up this potion, you're not going to break the time from Blizzard. Additionally, since you're still resisting the majority of them and they don't do much damage at all if you don't resist them, you're still going to be able to keep this pot up throughout the entire fight, giving you that extra two minutes of cooldown where you don't need to pop it later and can pop other consumables that are going to be more necessary later in the fight. So pop the Nature Protection Potion before you start the fight or the pool or anything like that and then keep on going from there. The pool itself is going to be pretty normal. It's going to be pretty much the standard pool. Obviously with some slight variations along the way just because we're a lower level and so we're going to be talking through those as we go. But if you guys haven't seen the normal pool, I'll have the video linked up above on this side. So you guys can go ahead and check out that video just to see the normal standard pool. But jumping through here, we have the mobs right here, the boars. Now they are green and so what you want to make sure is that they don't get too close to you so they could potentially daze you. And so if they did take off the ice barrier, there's a very small chance that we could get dazed. And so you want to make sure that you're keeping them off you at all times with jump turn, cone of colds, 
things of that nature. I'm still getting used to the gnome leeway, and so that's why you're going to see there that I did miss the Kona Cold on that back mob. But make sure that you keep up Ice Barrier at all times. They're not going to be doing a ton of damage to you, but you do not want it to fall off. You also have a lower rank of Ice Barrier, so you got to keep that in mind when you're going through. Just because there's less damage that you can protect from. We're going to get over here to the corner, and here's how we can show the first way to kind of handle as a gnome. And so I haven't shown any gnome Mara videos, but one of the easiest ways to handle Mardon as a gnome is to go around the left side here. And so if you go around the left side on a gnome, you actually don't swim, as opposed to the right side, where you do swim and you need an elixir of giant growth. And so you can see here that by blocking and then novaing the mobs, we have plenty of time to keep on moving. Normally, you don't lose too much health at all. Uh, I did get down to 71%. Use a pot if you need to. Don't need to worry about it too much though. The thing you do need to worry about though are these sisters right here that I just targeted. These sisters, when you're a lower level, obviously have a bigger aggro range, right? Because you're a lower level. They, you cannot pull them. You can't reset them. I tried sheeping them <laughs> so far ahead. I've tried pretty much everything. And if you pull them, it's just you might as well reset at that point and just let yourself die and reset because there's going to be no way that you do the pool on a lower level with those sisters. So dodge the sisters, even if that means you swim for a little bit, dodge the sisters, okay? So we jump up here, we aggro the noxious slimes, we go and grab the cavern lurker, pull the slimes like normal, blink through to the other side, and then keep on running. Now, one thing you want to make sure that you do as a lower level is watch your health. Right, and as you're gonna see there, I just use a superior healing potion. You're gonna be taking, you're gonna be having less health. Period. You're gonna be also taking more damage. Before you start these pools, I recommend you make sure that you have of the equal gear. Make sure you have magister's gear. Maybe grab a two piece from the Scalo set. I have dread mist, uh, two dread mist pieces, just so that I can have that extra 200 armor. Make sure that you get the armor because at the end of the day, you are pulling 170 mobs as a level 52 to 57 range, which means that you're going to be taking a lot of damage. I missed those two packs on the side, but that's fine. It's a couple mobs. You're going to be taking a lot of damage. Make sure that you optimize your itemization and things like that. It actually doesn't cost too much. Like I'm brand new on a brand new server. And so to do everything, to get all the consumables, to get all for like many runs, I have a ton of consumables. I have like 38 nature protection potions, 18 shadow protection potions, um, 15 magic resistance potions, like tons of consumables. It only cost me like 200 gold, which you're going to be able to make from leveling from here up to this point, just from ZF alone. So you're going to have the gold. Just get the of the eagle gear. They're pretty cheap off the auction house, and it's going to make a world of a difference. If you can get the glowing brightwood staff, get the glowing brightwood staff, get it enchanted with 22 intellect. That extra intellect is going to make a world of a difference. Get some nature resistance rings. You don't need to have 20 nature resistance rings. Those are incredibly expensive now with AQ and everything like that. But pick up like 14, 15, something like that. Get that nature resistance because you're going to see here, I just resist those series spells. And you're going to see at the end that I do resist a ton of the spells just purely from having the nature resistance. And at the end of the day, even if you're doing this at 52, the mobs level that are casting the spells are level 42 and 43, which means you're going to have a decent chance to resist them anyways. And so just get that nature resistance, get the extra gear, and it's going to pay off in the long run 100%. You're also going to be making a ton of gold while doing this strat, and so you're going to make all that gold back. So we come up this ramp here. One thing you do want to watch out for is this group right here. If you get too close to them, you will pull them on like when you're level 60. But come around the side, use the jump just to get across the pillar a little bit easier, and you're going to be good to go. Rank 1 and rank 1 to pull just as normal. You're going to notice that I did pop my Shadow Protection Potion. And so these Corruptions, you're going to see one go up right here. These Corruptions are going to be the bane of your existence because you aren't going to be resisting a lot of those. And I've had moments where there's been five Corruptions on me or more. And so that's a ton of damage, right? And so what you need to be doing is as soon as you get those Corruptions... Have the Shadow Protection Potion, just to make sure that it doesn't break, just obliterate your Ice Barrier real quick. But you can also block them off. And so if you're in the kill phase and you have, you know, let's say you have four or five Corruptions on you, and you know that you're going to be taking damage, you know you're going to be losing your shields, go ahead and just quickly block, cancel block, and go back into Blizzard. You're not going to lose, you know, more than a second doing the block and cancel block or maybe like a second and a half or two seconds. That's plenty of time because Blizzard lasts for four seconds to make sure that you keep up their rotation. 
Another thing I recommend is that when you're going through a rank one blizzard with a lower level tune to kind of aggro up all those mobs, the second that the mobs in the front get hit by that rank one blizzard and you got, you know, that front kind of pack slowed, just start moving. Don't worry about doing a second blizzard on the ramp or something like that because that's just giving extra time to get debuffs. And so you want to make sure that you are just continuing to move. So that's not the kill phase, but the kind of like the AOE phase that we just went through. And I'll jump back to that at the end of the video. So we're going to keep on going through here just as the normal pool. You want to make sure that you're staying ahead of the mobs. You'll see here I blink. I wait for counter spell on one of the front mobs to pull that pack. And I'll just stay in ahead of them. Don't worry too much about your health. You see that I'm at 60%. I could go ahead and pop a healing potion and get back up to full, but I don't want to pop a healing potion because at the end of the day, I want to be able to use my magic resistance potion at the very end. And so the magic resistance potion is going to be the third of the potions that we're going to be used, the third of the consumables. And so just from like a cost standpoint, it's going to cost you about four to five gold probably per run in consumables magic resistance is pretty cheap nature protections are going up in price right now because of this run shadow protection potions are still pretty cheap as well so actually probably closer to like three to four gold in consumables per run and then you want to have like heavy room cloth bandages so you want to have tailoring as well but it's not too expensive and you're going to be making about you know probably about 15 gold per run so you're going to be making your money back but you want to make sure that you keep the last potion use for your magic resistance potion. Reason being, if you do that, you basically counteract the level difference, even from level 52, by getting that extra, that's a really funny miss right there, by getting that extra resistance. And so that increases your resistances drastically, allowing you to be able to resist the corruptions, to resist the nature spells, to not have to worry about that. Jump off and banish to health, that way you can make sure that you keep up your potion cooldown and you don't use a healing potion or something like that to get up that extra health. If there's a front running mob here way ahead of the rest, you can see this guy right here. Just go ahead and worry about Nova-ing him and just blizzard the rest of the group. And so you're going to see once he gets up to me, I just go for the Nova and it's fine. And you just keep it moving from there. You're going to see though that I did resist a lot. Unfortunately, I didn't get many corruptions. If you do have a ton of corruptions on you, just block. Save, save this for the kill phase. Just block right there. You're going to see that a Corruptor is close to me. And so I jump turn Cone of Cold to make sure that I keep him off of me because Ice Armor is going to be gone. I'm in Mage Armor now. So I have no way of slowing him outside of using Cone of Cold or like a Frostbolt, but you can't take time to cast Frostbolt. Also with the blocks, if you're trying to clear the buffs, make sure that you're using Cancel Aura Block. If you hit Block and Cancel Aura Block immediately, you can literally block and get out of it in about 0.2 seconds and keep on moving so it's not going to cost you any time but it is going to reset your buffs and debuffs sorry just your debuffs okay so make sure that you do not blink after you jump down we're going through the normal strat again as i've said before you don't want to blink so you don't lose a bunch of mobs because at the end of the day you're trying to get the most experience so let's talk a little bit about the experience so from the level 43s and the level 42s that are casting abilities on you make sure that you pop your mana or magic resistant potions as we come around the side, they're not going to be hitting you much. Um, and they're not going to be giving any really XP because they're going to be great to you. You can see here that I have 114 nature resistance. Make sure that you pre-cast Blizzard to get that first Blizzard slow. And then the front moving mob is always your first mob that you're focusing on. So go ahead and Blizzard on him. Make sure that you keep them slowed. And now when you're on the top section, what you want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure that you get them all slowed, keep them all slowed as imperative, and then use the jump down to actually do your damage. And so here you're going to make sure that when you jump down, you do two blizzards on the bottom, jump back up to the top, do one blizzard, jump down to the bottom, do two blizzards, jump back up to the top, do one blizzard, back and forth, back and forth, and you're going to be good to go. You'll see here I have three corruptions. They actually got through my entire shadow protection potion. And so that's kind of showing you just there that it's really beneficial if you have a bunch of corruptions on you to make sure that you block them off. And so here we're just jumping back and forth. Eventually we'll start to get some kills. You can see 100 XP come through and that's from the deep boars. I am pretty much at the limit of the XP range for getting XP from the boars. So you're going to get a little bit more XP. And then there you see Noxious Slime at level 47 go down for 320 experience. And so if you're a level 52, you're actually going to be getting about 400 experience per mob, probably maybe 450. So let's say that there's 100 and let's, let's be really conservative, 100 elites that you're killing per run i think that's really conservative considering there's 170 mobs 
100 elites per run, that's potential of 40,000 experience per run. And then let's say that there's another 25 deep bores. I think there's around 25 to 30 deep bores. That's going to be another, what about 200? So that's going to be another 5,000 experience per run. So it's about 45,000 experience per run potentially on a 12 minute clear. So let's quickly get through and speed through the loot just to see how much money we did make from that one run. So from that one run alone, we did make about 22 gold just from that one run. We looted 123 mobs. And so we did make about 23 gold easily, easily pays for all of the potions, all the consumables and things like that. One huge recommendation that I have though, is you can see here that my inventory is pretty much full already from that one run. Make sure that you only bring one stack of your nature protection potions, one stack of your shadow protection potions, one stack of your magic resistance potions, and then one stack of your healing pots. Because at the end of the day, you know, you're not gonna be doing 50 runs before you go in vendor, unless, you know, somehow you have some magic vendoring trick that I don't know. And so you might as well save that extra bag slot to get the extra couple of runs. But this, guys, is a ton of fun to do before level 60 because it's especially challenging. But it also is going to be one of the best leveling ways. And so it's going to be part of my level 52 to level 57 strategy that I'm be coming out with very soon in an upcoming video. So definitely stay tuned to the channel for that. That should be coming out within the next probably week, maybe two. I'm leveling up another alt right now to be able to make that video. So definitely stay tuned to the channel to be able to see all of that. To reset, just go ahead, run outside the instance, and then just go and reset the instance just like you're doing a boost. Go back in through the portal and get right back to it. The entire run took, the entire video is about 16 minutes, including looting. The run itself took about 11 to 12 minutes. And so you're doing four of these an hour is the goal. Four of these an hour, tons of experience, this is actually going to be incredible, potentially up to as much as, what would that be, 180,000 experience per hour when you need about 160,000 experience level. Amazing possibilities here just from this one run alone, not including an extra improvement that we might be able to make. So as I said before, I'm going to be going over the gear and just showing you guys some of the gear that you can get just to make it easier. Now, I did this freshly on a new server and so I didn't have a ton of gold so I wasn't able to optimize you could definitely optimize further than this but this is some ideas for some gear that you could pick up off the auction house just to be able to make this farm possible and so here we start off with just of the eagle gear and you're going to see like Trion's amulet from SM and things like that just some BOEs it's all BOEs off the auction house you can blow about probably I don't know about 50 to 100 gold just on BOEs and just getting some stuff. Make sure that you do have the minor speed increase on your boots, as always, to be able to do the run. Get a couple nature resistance rings here, you know, just 14 and 15. Nothing crazy. I start off with 64 nature resistance, and then from using the pot, we get up to 114. And then just Ankh of Life is a heal. You can also get, you know, Uther's uh, trinket and everything like that just to get some extra stamina from the shield. Wanda the Eagle, and then the biggest thing, obviously, is the Glowing Brightwood Staff. This is going to be the most expensive item. If you can't get this, just substitute this for anything with Intellect and Stamina, Illusionary Rod or, or uh, Hypnotic Blade or something like that out of SM is going to be perfectly fine. This just benefits from the extra nature resistance. As far as talents go, we're going to make sure that we fill out the Arcane Tree to these talents. Now, this is going to be one of your most important things that you do do just to make sure you get Magic Absorption and you get Arcane Resilience. Also a great idea to get magic attunement if you can. Definitely would recommend that as well. But then you jump over into the frost tree. You can skip shatter for this farm for now just because we're not going to be using shatter. Um, but this is just the frost farm. You go down and you get um, probably, if you're lower level, just improve frost bolt. At 52, everything's going to have a 1% resist. You don't need the elemental precision. But you get the frost bolt. You get the frost warding. You jump down into the blizzard. Make sure that you pick up all the blizzard. Important stats and things like that. Frost channeling is going to be huge because with frost channeling, you're going to be able to save all the mana that you need and dive down through that. And then you get down to the end with the ice barrier, obviously. But with just the specific Amara farm itself, you could probably skip over shatter, probably even ice shards as well, just because you're going to be focusing on blizzard, which will allow you to pick up 
magic attunement and things like that. All right, everyone, that wraps up today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe and leave a like and a comment below to let me know so. And if you guys have any other ideas for any other videos, please let me know in the comments below. Also check out the description for the Twitch where I do all this live and also for my Twitter and Discord where you guys can be notified of any future updates and when I'm going to go live on stream. So I'll see you guys in the next video.